Hi everybody! Today we are going to look at JavaScript array methods and in particular we will look at the slice method. Now you should have a basic understanding of what a JavaScript array is before taking a look at this video, but I'm going to walk you through the slice method. It's easy as pie. In fact, if you've ever sliced a pizza and served pizza to yourself or others, then you know how to use the slice method. Okay, let's get started. Some of these JavaScript array methods may sound difficult and overly conceptual, but they're actually really, really simple. In fact, most of them you already know how to use. You already understand the logic because you use it in your life on a regular basis. And the slice method is no different. So we're going to apply the slice method through our understanding of pizza. Before we take a look at how to slice up a pizza, it's a good idea to get in the habit of visiting the MDM site to understand the JavaScript methods. So this is the Mozilla Developer Network page for the slice method. And you can see right here, the slice method returns a shallow copy of a portion of an array into a new array object. And as you move down the page, you'll get a deeper explanation of how the slice method works, what the arguments or parameters are. In this one, you have two parameters, begin, which is a necessary parameter, and then an optional parameter of end. and it explains precisely how to use that. You will also see examples as you move further down the page. So again, it's a really good idea if you're not in the habit of visiting the MDM page of getting in that habit. How does slice work? What is the slice method? The slice method returns a copy of a portion of an array. So it doesn't change the original array. It doesn't return an entire duplicate of the array, but it returns a copy of some portion of the array that you perform the slice method on. So here's a sample array that we will work with in this video. We have an array here with eight items, the numbers one, two, three, four, and the strings I love pizza more. So these eight items we can track, as you know, by their index, starting at index 0 and up through item 8, which is at index 7. So let's take a look at how we might perform the slice method on our array. Now, as I've said, if you can slice and serve pizza, you can use the slice method in JavaScript. Let's imagine that we've got a standard pizza here. We're going to cut it up into eight slices. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices of pizza. Using the slice method, how might we slice out or remove one slice of pizza from this pizza pie? Well, Obviously, you're going to cut on either side of the first slice to remove the first slice of pizza. So, in terms of the index of our array, we can see that we would start at index 0. We've got index 1 at the second piece, index 2 at the third piece, index 3 at the fourth piece, index 4 at the fifth piece, index 5 at the sixth piece, index 6 at the seventh piece, and index 7 at the eighth piece. Remember that our array has eight items. We'll assign each of these items to one of the slices of pizza by index. Now, if we want to perform the slice method, recall that we are going to return a copy of a portion of the original array. So we want to take out or slice out a portion of the original array. Let's imagine then that we want to take this first slice of pizza. How would you do that? 
Well, you would perform a slice starting at index 0 and ending at index 1 in order to remove that first slice, which in our array, of course, would be the number 1. So if we take the first slice of pizza, what will our slice method look like? It would look like this. We would declare a new array with the var keyword, var new array equals our original array, array dot slice, beginning at index 0, ending at index 1. So this can be confusing to some folks when they see this because we're not actually removing index 0 and index 1. We're only removing the slice at index 0. But to do that, of course, to remove this element, the element at index 0, which is the element 1, we have to make a slice starting at 0 and ending at 1. So we start before index 0, we end before index 1, and that gives us one element, not two. So how could we slice out the two pieces of pizza at indices 3 and 4? What would our slice method look like if we wanted to take out these two slices of pizza? Imagine the pizza arrives, you're starving, you're not a big fan of onions and you spot two slices, this one and this one, with almost no onions on it. So you say, ah, I would like to take out those two slices of pizza. How would we do this to remove these two elements at indices 3 and 4? Take a moment and see if you can type out what the slice method would look like. If what you type looks like this, then you're correct. Var new array equals array dot slice three comma five which means that we are going to begin slicing here at index three and we're going to make another slice here at index five now that gives us only these two slices of pizza at indices three and four we don't also get the slice of pizza at index five see it's actually quite easy now, once we've made this slice to remove the third and fourth slices of pizza, which elements are copied from our original array? That's right, the number four and the string i. The number four is at, is at index three and the string i is at index four. But remember, we're not actually removing these elements from the original array, we're making a copy of a portion of the elements. We always leave our original array untouched when we perform the slice method. So what we end up with after performing the slice method on the original array is the original array itself with all of the elements, one, two, three, four, I love pizza more, and our new array. Another interesting way you can use the slice method is by using a negative number to remove slices from the end of the array. So for example, here we have our eight slices of pizza again, indices zero through seven. If we declare a new variable, var new array, and we set that equal to the original array, dot slice negative two, what we end up with is a copy of the last two elements of the array. So we would remove index seven and index six from our original array and copy that into our new array. Now remember what we're left with here is not merely one new array, but the original array with all of the original elements, one, two, three, four, I love pizza more, and our new array that contains the items that we have copied a portion of from the original array, and in this case, pizza and more. 
So, the slice method is used to return a copy of a portion of an array. Well, this is all fine and good, but of course you won't actually be using JavaScript array methods on pizza, so how might you use this in your own code? Let's look at one example. Imagine that you work on a site and you have a list of books. Here's a very small list of books. It's an array. If the syntax looks strange to you, it's just the formatting. I've put each element of the array, which is an object, on its own line to make it a little easier to see. This is an array nonetheless with five items, five objects with the title of each book. So imagine you have an array that you're going to put, be putting hundreds and hundreds of books in. And you need that array, maybe for a page on your website that lists all books. But what if you also want to give a little preview on your splash page and say, maybe show just three of the books. So you don't want to actually change the original array of books because you want all of those items to be in the array, but you would like to take a slice, a copy of a portion of that array and show that array on your splash page or your main page. So you might have a variable that you have declared called top books. You might then set your top books variable to be equal to a slice of items from your books array. So say you want to show three of your top books, you would then set top books equal to books.slice. And if you slice beginning at index zero, ending at index three, you would get the books at indexes zero, one, and two, which would be the first three books. Okay, everybody, glad you stopped by. I hope this helps you to see that although some of the array methods sound a little difficult conceptually, they're actually quite easy and things that you already understand and use in your everyday life. See you next time.